by 8050 points Tau Army. We're using the older codex just before the switch over. So last chance to play with the old codex in sixth edition. HQ choice is one Shazo Crisis Commander, two gun drones, missile pod and plasma rifle. And then an ethereal, an ephoral as well. Troops, two units of 12 fire warriors. Two gun drones in the fire unit there, one gun drone. And this one, team leader and bonded. Heavy support. One hammerhead gunship. And another hammerhead gunship. Smart missile systems, rail gun, disruption pod, target lock, multi tracker. Fully armed. And then at the back here, three XV 88s with four shield drones, team leader, and target lock. Elites. One lone uh, crisis suit with twin link fusion blasters and missile pod and drones and then a unit of three various armaments, mainly fusion blasters and plasma rifles and gun drone protection there as well. Fast attack. Unit of eight pathfinders with gun drone protection. And they are in they're being accompanied in the Devilfish. And then finally just a little bit of close combat support. Two units of Crute. Two units of 15 with Shaper. One there. And one there. That's 1850 points. Tower Army. Right, James's 1850 point Blood Angels list. You've seen it before in previous games. It's the Reclusiarch as his HQ choice. And he's given him melter bombs of a spare five points this time. And then over to troops. It's five assault marines, dedicated transport, the land raider. Then the storm raven gunship. And that's carrying. Deaf company dreadnought. And then seven deaf company. There's a thunder hammer in there and two power weapons. Heavy support. One Predator Annihilator, and then the second Storm Raven gunship. Both of these, by the way, are armed with twin linked Les Cannon and twin linked Multi Melter. This one's carrying Furioso Dreadnought with Frag Cannon and Dreadnought Close Combat Weapon, and then Assault Terminators. This time the Sergeant has dropped the Thunder Hammer and Storm Shield and he's taken two Lightning Claws instead. And then the final troops choice is five assault marines in the Razorback. That's James's Blood Angel army. Okay, we've rolled for scenario. It's, the scenario is the Emperor's Will. That's one objective each worth three points. And it's hammer and anvil deployment. So measuring from the center, 12 inches, there's a deployment line along here, and this is the Blood Angel end of the table. So Blood Angels are setting up here, and James has placed his objective just behind the ruin over there. And then the tower, the tower up this end, just behind this line, here's the deployment zone. And their objective is just in the woods there. So that gives you an idea of the battlefield. Some woods, a few ruins, ammunition dump, and a swampy river just running up the middle there. So James is going to deploy first. Alright, deployment's done. James has deployed a land raider behind the ruin, just covering the objective, and a razorback, the other troop choice, behind the ammunition dump here. And the rest of his army is in reserve coming on. The Tau have deployed one hammerhead gunship on the hillside here. Look at that view he's got overlooking the battlefield. The other hammerhead's just down in the valley here. And then on the hillside, really good view across the battlefield is the XV-88s. And I put the Afro with them, so they're fearless. And he's in good view of the other units. And then infiltrating, looking forwards, unit pathfinders. And they've deployed just outside of 18 on the hillside 
overlooking James's team. And then in reserve, uh, the two units of Fire Warriors, they'll be coming on from the back line of the table. Crisis Commander has joined the unit of three Crisis Suits, that's unit four now, with four drones between them. And then there's one Crisis Suit on its own. And then both units of Crute are outflanking. So we're looking to ambush James as he comes forwards. And then in reserve for James is the Predator Annihilator. Storm Raven gunship with the Death Company will be flying on. And the other Storm Raven gunship with the Terminators will be coming on as well. Alright, Blood Angel turn one. Land Raider moved 12. And then he went flat out and moved up behind this barricade here, and then he has moved the Razorback behind the Land Raider to protect himself. And that is it. No shooting uh, for the Blood Angels. And there's no night fighting at the moment, so uh, it's a clear field of fire for the tower on turn one. We'll see what we can do. Right, tower turn one. Tank maneuver down off the hill and had a shot at the land raid, hit it, but didn't penetrate. And on the other side, the XV-88s, two of them could see the land raider, fired and ignored his cover save and increased their ballistic skill by one. That was thanks to the pathfinders here. Got five marker light hits on the land raider and one hit, one glance on the land raider, so failed to destroy it. And then the other hammerhead has just moved and tucked around behind this building. So we're going to see what happens now on Blood Angel turn two. Right, well it's Blood Angel's turn two and both of his flyers have turned up. One of the Terminators has screamed straight up the middle here, right into the heart of the Tau army. So we're going to be in a, facing a bit of trouble. And the one with the Death Company has screamed up on the left hand flank as well. So both have turned up. So turn two is going to be interesting, and it's Blood Angel shooting phase coming up now. All right, Blood Angel's shooting phase, and they are dominating the skies, these flyers. This one's fired down and destroyed the main armament and two hull points on this hammerhead. So that one's pretty much out of action. And the Death Company one fired down, and that is what is left of the Devilfish, it's been blown to smithereens. So, Blood Angels immediately causing horrendous casualties on the tower. And a couple of heavy bolt shots went through and killed one gun drone. So it's tower turn two now, let's we'll see if we can reply with our own firepower. Right, town turn two movement. The fire warriors turned up and have moved up to move on to the uh, objective there. The outflanking crew, one came on this side, so moving this unit up. I'm going to try and screen the front of the hammerhead. I doubt we're wrong to be able to do it. Next few ATAs to stay where they are on the hillside. Uh, the hammerhead moved from behind here and has gone 12. It's going to go on a suicide ramming mission, that's all it can do. And the pathfinders have stayed where they are. They're going to try and mark light up this. Land Raider, and then on the far side, the crew have turned up, moving towards James's objective. They're just behind the ruin there. So, tower shooting phase coming up. See what we right, can tower do. Tower shooting phase. The uh, crew have moved across to screen the tank. They're doing okay. Fire warriors shifted along two inches. Uh, this tank shifted back six. You'll see why in a moment. And the Pathfinder squad. The Pathfinder squad. Put a three marker lights on the Land Raider, and then the this one uh, it let the hammerhead fire, hit on a two plus, used one of the marker lights to increase ballistic skill, then knocked his armor uh, cover save down, and we managed to score another glancing hit on the Land Raider. So it's not bad going. The crew have moved up and rolled a six for moving through cover, so they've moved deeper into the terrain. They've shifted over a little bit just to stretch the distance between uh, this flyer, who's probably going to deploy his Dregnaught and Death Company next turn, so the Pathfinders will be in trouble. But, heroes of the day so far for the tower, the XV-88 Crisis team fired, 
using the snapshot hits twin linked. Managed to get two sixes and hit the central flyer. James tried to jink, got a five plus on one of them, but one of them went through, penetrated, and blew it out of the sky. And then when it crashed, it went backwards nine inches, it blew it out backwards and landed here. Casualties are three Terminators, including the Sergeant of Dives, there's only two left, and the Dreadnought lost its close combat arm and multi melter. So a lot of damage done in the middle there from the XV 88s brilliant firepower. Those twin linked row guns coming in very handy. So that's revenge from the tower. And uh, now moving on to Blood Angel turn three. Right, Blood Angel's movement phase. The Terminators fell back, went behind the uh, downed flyer. The Dreadnought moved around, the Razorbacks moved over, and the Land Raiders fallen back, and the passengers have disembarked. And then over with the Death Company. Death Company have uh, disembarked just behind the hill here, looking to assault the Pathfinders. We'll see if they can actually reach. And the, so the flyer is now in hover mode. He's also deployed the Death Company Dreadnought, and that's going to try and charge the crew in the building there. And that one should be out of reach. So, Blood Angel shooting phase coming up next. Right, Blood Angel shooting phase on turn three. Terminator shuffled an inch backwards. Probably still in shock from having crashed. Land Raider fired twin at Abby Bolton, killed three crew over there. And the Death Company fired and killed one drone on the Pathfinders. Last cannon fired from this uh, Storm Raven in hover mode, hit and bounced off the armor on the Hammerhead. So it's now assault phase. James is going to roll to see if the Death Company make it to the Pathfinders. Here we go. <laughs> Five inches. Uh oh. No, he hasn't made it. And the Dreadnought, he doesn't want to get a double one. Oh, he's got fleet, so he's going to make it. Double one. <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> double six. <laughs> oh dear, you couldn't have scripted it better. In they go. So the crew are in a little bit of trouble. They've gone to the butchers. Right, Blood Angel close combat. The uh, Death Company Dreadnought killed five crew. Crew couldn't do anything back, so we used our weapons of useless special rule to actually ran away and have fallen back six inches. And we'll try and rally them on the tower turn three coming up next. Tower movement on turn three. The fire warriors have moved up, trying to take a better position, and they ran just an inch. So they're almost at the edge of the woods there. The hammerheads move forwards. It's got a nice clear line of sight up to the flyer. The crew have moved forwards and then ran an inch, moving across the stream. Uh, this busted hammerhead here has moved forwards, just going to use its uh, smart missile systems. The Pathfinders, not sure what to do though, they've fallen, they've fallen back three inches. That's probably not enough to get away from the Death Company. So, I'm not sure because I might fire snapshots up at the flyer there, try and get marker light hits. And the XV 88s have stayed there. And on then the crew on the far side have rallied, they've fallen back three inches, and they're just sitting here. They're able to take snapshots. They might fire at Death Company or they might fire at the rear end of the Dreadnought there. So, it's turn. Three for the tower shooting phase coming up. Right, tower shooting phase. Hamhead fired at the flyer and missed. 
Next for the 88s, fired three hits on the flyer. I thought I had him, but he rolled two jinx saves and one penetration and it was a weapon destroyed. So it was a hull point and the last cannon was destroyed. Now the crew firing snapshots got two hits with sixes and then rolled another six. They scored a glance on the dreadnought and a hull point. And that is it, no combat for the tower. And in the end I did use the pathfinders to fall back and they went back another three inches. They should be safe from the deaf company. So moving on now to Blood Angel turn Four. The game really hangs in the balance. It's hard to tell who's going to win. The tower got an advantage. They're sitting on their objective nicely. Blood Angel's quite a way away. And still waiting for all the crisis suits to arrive and a squad of fire warriors from reserve. So moving on now to Blood Angel turn four. Right, Blood Angel turn four. He's gone back into flying mode again and he's turned up there, so he's going to try and multi-melt my tank. Def Company have crossed over onto the hillside looking to chase the Pathfinders. And over here the uh, Razorback has moved and gone flat out just around the bend here along with the Dragnaut he's ran moving up towards the Crute. On from reserve the Predator Annihilator has gone 12 and then gone 6, popped smoke as well and the terminators have moved from here and they're coming across to protect the objective and so is the land raider and he's pop smoke as well and you can guess what's happened with the crew it's been chased by mr dice and slice so we're on to blood angel turn for last of his shooting and he's going to see if this multi melter hits the tank so he's going to roll up just rolling both dice for twin linked. He gets the hit. He's going to roll to penetrate. Arm, front arm of 13. 13. 13's to beat. That's 8, 9, 10, 11. And he has bounced. So the hammerhead gunship survives. So moving on to the assault phase for Blood Angels. Death Company failed to charge. And this dreadnought's gone in, so we're going to work out this combat. It's pretty obvious what's going to happen. Right, assault phase results. The dreadnought chopped up six crew, and the shapers run away, and he'll just continue to fall back. So this is the end of Blood Angel turn four. Game hangs in the balance. This flyer is still operative. Going to have to try and bring it down somehow. And the pathfinder is still alive. James is put, making a push-up on the objective. And what we've got at the moment is Crute to face him one hammerhead. And he's consolidating on his own objective. So, tough call at the moment. We'll see how well the Tau do in bringing on their reserves and what they can do. turn four, the shape of the battle has changed a little bit. XV-88s have swung around, they're going to try and bring down this flyer. Fire warriors have turned up from reserve, another squad of 12 with two drones. This squad's shifted up, they're now at the edge of the woods, looking out across the battlefield. And this damaged hammerhead has fallen back. And so have the Pathfinders, they rolled a six, they're well back now. They might still get caught by a death company, but they've fallen back pretty good. And then the hammerhead's moved around six and he's just sitting here. He's got a good view over to the drug way off in the distance. Might be able to get a shot off there, depends how the shooting phase goes. The crew have moved up six, they're in the cover here and they are poised for an assault and you'll see what I mean as I move. All my reserves have arrived, so both units crisis suits arrived with the commander. So the squad of three arrived with the commander has landed perfectly, got a hit and it's landed there, so we're right on the rear armour of these two units, this is a perfect tower ambush, and the other one scattered, it was meant to land there, it was the first one to land, landed here instead on the side armour of this Predator Annihilator, so we'll see how the tower shooting phase goes, we can eliminate this left hand flank and be in a good position for a tower victory. Shooting phase, the XV-88 is going to try and bring down this flyer. So we're going to roll up. Need sixes, and snapshots. Uh, two ones and a two, oh dear. So we re-roll those. 
sixes we want, double six, <laughs> twos to do something, oh, he's got one jinx save, a five plus, or he's in trouble, he's got a one, so we're going to roll it up, four plus would be good, a five, AP one becomes a seven, he's blown away <laughs> again, XV88s have brought down another flyer, that is good, good shooting. Those guys on the hillside are kicking some butt. <laughs> we'll see where this wreck lands. Lands where it is. So, no damage. Right, tower turn four shooting. The fire warriors moved up, uh, taking, holding the edge of this hill, and uh, just within three inches of objectives. We've got two fire warrior units holding the objective. XV88 is fired. As we know, they destroyed the flyer and it landed just there. That's what's left of it. Uh, smart missile system. Shot and kill one from the death company. The crisis squad. Fired. Uh, the main squad fired, destroyed the dreadnought, blew it up. And then the commander has a target log, he can shoot at a different target. He fired and destroyed the Razorback. And then the crew got out just there, or the uh, assault marines got out just there. And then the crew, a few of them in rapid fire range, they fired and managed to kill one of the marines. And then the other one, the other crisis, fired and immobilized hull point on the Predator Annihilator. And then in their jump phase, they're now allowed to jump in the assault phase. These have just dispersed themselves using the drones to protect the uh, crisis suits and then the other crisis has jumped down and just hiding behind the barrels here. So we're now moving on to Blood Angels turn five. Okay, Blood Angel movement phase. The assault squad's moved down. It looks like they're getting ready to assault the crisis team. So we're locked in combat there. Terminator's moved up. He is within 12 inches, he could roll it on a double six, he would be able to make it into combat. The uh, Death Company Dragnaughts move around and pop smoke. And the Land Raiders sitting there with the uh, Assault Squad have disembarked and they're holding the objective. So both armies holding the objective there. Death Company have rolled a six, they've moved up fast over the hillside and they stand a reasonable chance of reaching the Pathfinders into combat. So it's Blood Angel shooting phase coming up. Blood Angel turn 5 shooting. A pistol shot from the uh, assault squad wounded one of the crisis suits. And then horrendous fire coming from the land raider. He fired the heavy bolts first, cleared away the two drones. And then a las cannon hit, instant death on one of the crisis suits. That's uh, nasty hits taken there. And. The uh, Assault Terminators have ran, they've got a six, they've moved up right up close now. This one moved up as well, six, so they're closing in now on this flank. And he decided to run the Death Company and they've closed in six as well. Right, Blood Angel Assault phase. The Crisis Suits uh, picked off two Blood Angels as they charged in. So he had two left. The Sergeant issued a challenge at my commander. My commander made two saves, commander hit him back, and he died, and then the last Blood Angel was hit and killed by the other crisis team. So they won, it was a wipeout, and they've moved up four inches. That's freed up that team, so that's a good result. All right, tower movement. Fire Warriors will stay where they are, just watching the objective. Hammerhead's moved round, and he's gonna try and get a sub-ammunition shot over on the Death Company there. Pathfinders have risked it. They're gonna stay where they are and try and get Markalite hits on the Death Company. They're gonna try and wipe them out and get slay the Warlord. XV-88s have stayed where they are. Crisis team has jumped over the wreckage and is moving towards the Death Company. The crew have moved up and over, heading this direction. And the Crisis suit has moved round just to get a rear shot, and he's gonna try and scoot around this left-hand side as well. So, Tau turn 5 shooting coming up, this is going to be interesting. Right, Tau turn 5 shooting. The Fire Warriors, the whole squad here fired through and killed one Death Company. 
And the Pathfinder's managed to get three marker light hits on the Death Company. I used those for my battle suits, but did absolutely nothing with the shooting. It's a real disappointment there. So the Death Company are intact pretty much. Not good. Uh, the Hammerhead fired and did no damage again with the submunition. Crew Warriors moved up and through. The uh, Crisis suit fired and did another hull point on the Predator Annihilator and the XV-88s on the hill fired through two penetrations on the land radar failed a cover save, rolled a four blown it sky high so another good round of shooting from the XV-88s unit of the game so far for the 10.